sell yourself short. That, that is one, the one thing you have to do. You're selling yourself short on that. Do you remember all the Zoom meetings in the beginning that where I forgot to hit record? And so like from a the half, audience would half be back Friday. And people from the audience would holler, Did you hit record? When even like the audience is smarter than you. Like, pretty much all the time. Well, um, I just want to point out that Young Min is in a book. Young Min, do you have a book coming out as well? Yes. 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 Yeah. When I, is that uh, publication? Uh, we are aiming um, for 2024, next year. Next year. Yeah. Okay. Well, in the, in the meantime. Oh, no. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. Background. That's, Hold on. I got to unblur my background. That's my friend Sarah's book. And yes, you can see my Budagi. That's beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying this book. It's very, oh, yeah. And then this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my. Um, oh, that's yours. You basically illustrated this whole book, except for just. <laughs> she, a few she's pictures. my good friend. So she, when she asked me some good images. I was yeah, yeah, like, too. yeah. We were just like, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I've got a couple. Is she in the Bay Area as well? No, she lives in UK. She is mm. um in Brighton. Uh -huh. And she and I met in Korea when we uh, at, um attended the Bujagi Forum. Uh huh. Yeah. So. So great. Yeah. It's nice to see everybody. Thanks for having your videos on so we can see you. So we're not alone in a room with people's names on black squares. Right. Back in the day, we'd be in a Grange Hall together. We'd be in horse and buggy traveling to some yes. barn raising or something. Back in the day, we'd be at a barn raising, Kathy. Which would be fun. How exactly would we be able to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any carpentry skills. You'd have to. You listen in the apocalypse. You better start fashioning some tools, because we're gonna need all these things. I'm gonna need to be an electrician, a plumber, carpenter, and so are you. Also a designer. Okay. That's what actually okay. all these Back Fridays are about. So how, we can, how we can at least create beautiful self reliance colors. skills self-reliance natural dyeing hey remember somebody still has to cook <laughs> that's got to be helen it's true oh <laughs> 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 uh, look here's another thing about cool all right how are how ready are we uh it seems like it's slowing down a little bit I can let them in. Okay. So for, <clears throat> All right, Amy. For new, for 86 people, degrees weather. 86 degrees. Count us in. Pod, and here's my job, my one job that actually makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, no, I have to stop. <laughs> See what happens when you fool around? And these people have never been here. They have no idea that we have a theme song. That we're highly paid professionals. <laughs> oh, I forgot to share sound so you can hear this really nice and loud. Suzanne's okay. ready. Let's try it again. Suzanne's ready to dance. Okay, here we go. Well, it's the end of the week. Now, where you been? Well, now it's Feedback Friday. So come on in. Come sit down. Stare at your screen. We got a presenter that you never seen. We're Feedback Friday. We're on the loose. We'll be the train. You be the caboose. It's Feedback Friday with Kathy and Amy. Mashed potatoes and the gravy. It's Feedback Friday all day long. Feedback, feedback, feedback Friday. Oh my goodness, it's Friday. 
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Feedback Friday, episode 128. And Amy, I hope you are letting people in. I, I sure talk. am. Great. Uh, I'm Kathy Hot Tory, president of Botanical Colors, and joining me from Cape Cod in very warm weather is Amy Dufo, our director of communications. And uh, Feedback Friday is our show where we love to meet with, talk, and learn from all sorts of people who are involved in the textile arts, including artists, scholars, historians, activists, uh, people who forage, people who are in the industry, uh, sustainability designers, etc. But we all have one thing in common, and that is that we love color and we love textiles, and we love the natural world. So we are so pleased to welcome today textile artist Youngmin Lee. Youngmin is joining us from um, the Bay Area, the East Bay, and she's going to be discussing uh, her practice using Korean textile traditions that include hojagi and her ultimate journey to find happiness through her work in community. Um, young men have a master's in fashion design and a bachelor's in clothing and textiles. And um, she is also part, if you're here in the um, Puget Sound area, she's going to be here up in La Conner at the La Conner Quilt Museum, which has an official name that I've now not remembered. Um, but she'll be here on the 14th for a gathering of the artists. And there are over 25 amazing people. I just looked through the roster who are part of this uh, exhibit that was curated by our dear friend, Patty King. So this is definitely a um, kind of Feedback Friday supporters and natural dyers who are all going to be uh, convening at La Conner Quilt Museum, if you can join us, please do. And um, just a few reminders and some housekeeping, and then I'll turn it over to Young Min. Um, we are full force with our workshops right now. We've got workshops happening with uh, Natalie Stopka, Jody Alexander, and myself, and me alone uh, in the next couple of months. So. The big one is Jody Alexander and I will be leading a natural dye workshop to create uh, traditional Japanese um, bags called Tuno Bukuro, as well as a patched poorly gig bag. And it's going to involve dyeing and stitching and learning mending techniques. Uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. And the plus is that we're in the process of moving to a new studio space and that'll be the first workshop that we hold there. So we're very excited about that. It's, uh, I don't know, it's going to be both really interesting and fun. And we'll learn all the little quirks of the new place together and uh, hope to see you there. So that's up on the site. Um, we have a few books that we have um, that we would like to lighten our load as we move. So those are also on sale 20% off. Check those out. And uh, in terms of housekeeping, Amy is our moderator on this, so we'd like you to stay muted until um, the end of our presentation, and then we unmute to say hello and greet each other. Um, Amy is also in charge of moderating all the questions in chat. So as you have questions come up, she will open up chat at the end of Young Men's talk, and you can add your questions in there. Uh, and I think we're going to have just an amazing, amazing presentation. We're very excited. Young men, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to hand it all over to you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you, Amy, for um, inviting me. And hello, everybody. I see some familiar faces, which makes me feel, oh, good and um and some of you we never met before but so nice to meet you in virtual i'm so happy to be here and talk about uh, my journey to find happiness 
with a little bit of um, story about textile. So um, I will share my screen and jump into my story. Okay, I hope you all can see me now, see my presentation now. Can you hear me well? Okay, good. Okay, I will start. So first of all, um, some of you already know what Bojagi is. Some of you um, heard about it, but don't know much about it well. And some of you never heard about Bojagi. So I'd like to start with the word Bojagi. Bojagi is Korean wrapping cloth to use, use to wrap, cover, carry, and store objects but not only objects, but also happiness. Koreans believe Bojagi can carry and wrap happiness too. And I agree with it. So today I'd like to um, talk about Korean aesthetics and the fabric recycling from all the days and keeping tradition and wish for happiness. So Korea, um, in Korea, there was a um, dynasty before um, Republic of Korea now. And in all the days, Pujagi can be defined as uh, two big categories. One is Gungbo, Pujagi for royal court. And the second one is Minbo. So Gungbo, as you can see, it was um, made by ordered and made by um, government officials. So you can see many elaborate bujagis like painted, embroidered, gold stamped, etc. But I'd like to talk about Mimbo because Mimbo is made and used by commoners, just people just like me. And in this category, Chogakbo, Subo, Sangbo, Kiragibo are all um, included. You don't have to worry about uh, memorizing all the names. I will show you with uh, some images and explain. So now we are looking at one Bojagi and we can ask question, what is your name? What do we call this Bojagi? This can be Minbo because I made. And this can be Moshipo because the material is Moshi, Remi. And it is Hotpo, single layer, the Bojagi. And it is also Samsol Jogakpo by the technique. And it is Chekpo because I wrapped books. So it's quite a lot of um, name. So when you see single layer, the Bojagi, it is called Hotpo. And the other kind, when you see lined bojagi, more than two layers, then it is called gyeokbo. Jogakbo is patchwork bojagi. So a lot of times, uh, many people are confused um, by the name bojagi and jogakbo. Bojagi is an umbrella term to contain all the bojagi, different kinds of bojagi. And jogakbo is one um, that was made out of remnants or leftover materials. So it is patchwork to Bojagi. And as you can see from the images, I use a lot of um, small pieces of fabrics. So when you see patchwork to Bojagi, then I, you can call it as, oh, that is Jogakbo. Jogakbo has many different um, designs. Some are very geometrical, some are free form design by the maker's um, availability, like what do you have and what kind of idea you have and what are you going to make if you are going to make um, Jogakbo for a practical purpose or decorative purpose. But one um, idea that all um, Jogakbo shares is 
all the hand stitched part is a result of wishing happiness because Korean women were trying to imbue and add good thoughts and uh, wish for happiness while they were making chogakbo. Jubo is another type of bujagi, embroidered bujagi. And as you can see, some uh, motifs were embroidered. And usually, these are another way of wishing happiness because flowers and birds and trees and um, fish and butterflies, these are all auspicious symbols. So, Subo was used for happy occasions. And wedding can be one of the happiest um, occasion in person's life. So Bujagi was used um, in weddings, especially a lot of embroidered Bujagi. So this is me 30 years ago when on my wedding day and I'm wearing a wedding robe embroidered with many auspicious symbols like peonies and uh, phoenix and flowers and etc. There is a um, special type of bojagi. It is called sajubo and honsajibo for the wedding. So before people get married, um, Korean people believe the person's four pillars of destiny, which is birth year, month, day, and hour, they all determine someone's um, destiny or fate. So it is very important to see soon to be Bridegrooms as Haju or bride's fam, uh, parents. They want to make sure their daughter can be happy after she gets married. So, this is my um, husband's Haju bow, Haju, and wrapped in special type of Bujagi. And in return, um, bride's family, especially parents, um, they they write a letter and choose the good date for the wedding, which is called Yangil. So these um, documents and letters are wrapped in special type of Bojagi, Yangilbo, and returned to bridegroom's family. So these are um, tradition that you can see from Korean wedding. And even though my um, husband and I met in college, both my parents uh, tried hard to follow all the traditions. So I feel very fortunate to have my own um, documents and bujagi from my own wedding. Another bujagi that you can see on um, the wedding occasions is kirogi bo. Kirogi is goose. So in old days, people used wild geese and um, sometimes people use wooden geese and it was wrapped in a special type of bujagi, which is called the kirogi bow and presented to a wedding table. So the red and blue one are my own and other three images that you can see is um, the one that I made and used for my daughter's own wedding in last December. And you can see some special decorations um, and it is called the Kirogi Medu. And it's distinctive decoration that you can see from the Kirogi Bo. Yemul Bo is another type of bujagi that you can see from many happy occasions, including wedding and birthdays and um, some celebrations. So these are gift to wrap bujagi. So when you have a gift or gift money or anything precious, then you can wrap in a bujagi like this and present. So this is a part of present and uh, you can keep it. Um, both present and bojagi for yourself. In daily life, um, sangpo is one good example of bojagi. But sangpo is covering bojagi, or you can line underneath the table. 
So one distinctive characteristic is um, small knob in the middle of Bojagi. So you can see, you can cover the table or food tray and then present it to a person. And then you can lift it up when you are presenting a food. So whenever you see something in the middle like this, then you can consider as covering Bojagi. And I said it's daily life, but you can use elaborate silk fabrics or very practical Ramy or cotton or linen. There is a story about seven friends uh, in Korea. So those seven friends are needle, thread, pair of scissors, and corner iron and big iron, ruler, and a thimble. The story is saying these seven friends are were arguing while the lady was um, taking a nap and they were boasting about who is the best friend of the lady. They all have their own um, special talents, but at the end of the story, they realized they cannot perform or help the lady without each other's help. So I often use this seven friends uh, story when I introduce Bojagi and my sewing life. And these are my new friends to make my life easier. So I love to use it. rotary cutter and threaders, hair marker and thin rollers, things like this. So let's take a look at um, traditional Bojagi materials. Ta is silk gauze. And you can see some auspicious patterns were woven on the fabric. So these are um, bojagi made with the sa, silk gauze fabric. And nobang, silk organza is another great um, material, especially it is very effective to make single layer the bojagi using some sort of technique. And done is silk satin. When it's um, there's no pattern, then you call it gongdan, silk satin. And when you see some patterns on the fabric, it is called brocade, I think. And I call it yangdan. And grapes, lotus, flower, Clouds and phoenix, bats, these are all auspicious patterns. So people try to get more um, good things by using auspicious pattern fabrics. And this is one of the bojaki that I used, the yangdan. And as you can see, it has sheen from the weave and a lot of uh, auspicious patterns from the, um, the weave too. And I also use the cellulose fi fiber too. And these are traditional um, fibers, Raimi, hemp, cotton, and linen. I don't see um, linen was um, widely used in back all the days, but you often see Raimi, hemp, cotton from all the bojagi. And these are the fabrics. So I call hemp sambe and raimi as moshi and cotton as mumyeong these are korean names and these are parts of bujagi that i made with cotton hemp linen and raimi so these are all very uh, good material to you make jogakbo and they dye very well too so i love to use these materials there are 10 stitches and five seam techniques to make bojagi. And a um, couple of years ago, I made a book about stitch, all the stitches and seam techniques. So my stitch sampler book has all um, stitches 
but you can see each stitch um, was um, made and um, how it is used. So some are decorative stitches, some are construction um, stitches. And I made into a book and just love making books. So I made several books and I'd love to show you after uh, my talk. And this is one bojagi that I made as a um, stitch sampler. So there is Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. So two years ago, we made, um, I made a um, special project um, that I can show all the stitches in one bojagi and accompanied with um, stitch sampler books. So people can see and learn from being bojagi. And I as I mentioned, I love to make books. So I made Yeoju Moon book. Yeoju Moon is jewel pattern. And many of you can think as cathedral window. Yes, it's exactly the same technique. And the decorative motif, small tiny uh, figure eight thing in the middle is called the Pakji, Pakji Medip. And that is um, bat, flying bat. And Korean people love to use this motif because bat sounds happiness when you write down. So as I mentioned, uh, my journey to find happiness, um, you might want to know a little more about me. So I was born and raised in Korea and I always loved fabrics, textiles, and colors. So I studied clothing and textile and majored um, fashion design. So these are part of my um, graduate school work. And as you can see, it's far from Bojagi or Korean traditional textiles. My focus was on Western style fashion when I was living in East. But life changed its own trajectory. So after I got married, uh, we moved to California. My husband's job made us to move. And when we came, my daughter was six months old. So on the right side, you can see blue and um, red pojagi. And I call it potari. Potari can be a noun and also can be a verb. So it's an act of putting your things and then move to somewhere. It is called the Sada. So I Butari Sad and, and moved to California. And for several years, I was very busy to adjust a new life. At the beginning, we thought we will maybe live in the in here for five years, maybe six. But after five and six, I realized I think I will live here longer. So I decided to start to making things and the most comfortable thing that I created was pojagi because it's very natural thing for me so I made and people started to want to know about my work so this is my first um, public event in back in 2004 at the Asian Art Museum, I was there and demonstrate my work and share my work with people. And that led me to teach workshops in various places. And one year I went down to LA and taught workshops. Not only teaching a workshop, but we decided to do something fun. So we started Community Bojagi Project. So for Four month of period, 1700 visitors came and put two pieces of fabrics together. And our community Bujagi was growing like this. And at the end, um, we were able to install at the um, Boone Children's Gallery and the museum applied to Guinness World Record. So this is 
for the biggest bojagi that we made. So teaching and sharing is a um, really fun thing to me. So I decided, okay, not only making for myself, but I want to share and teach people. So back in 2013, I made the Bojaki DVD. This is teaching material that I show and explain the techniques and traditions and history and some how-to projects. Not only teach, teaching grown-ups, but I love to teach um, children too. So there's one public school in San Francisco that I've been teaching children from third grade to eighth grade for 10 years. And children can make a really wonderful work like this. And these are online class um, results. So during the pandemic, I taught a lot of online classes and we had fun. And I asked my students, when you finish your project, please, please send me a picture so I can share with other people. And these are my students' work and another page of my students' work. Eileen sent me a um, Yeoju Moon Cathedral Window um, Bojagi picture last night. So I asked her if I can add. So she said yes. So I added uh, her picture over here too. So 2019 and 2022, um, last year, I was fortunate to get a grant from Alliance for California Traditional Arts. So I was able to teach two wonderful um, artists as my apprentice. And we had a great time teaching and learning, and we were lucky to have a chance to have an exhibit for both of them. So this is another thing that makes me happy. And my Bujagi style is um, started from very traditional style, but I always wanted to do something different and try to get out of the box. So using different designs, different materials, and different um, techniques, I always have um, a lot of fun to explore things with the Bojagi. And uh, these two are works that I uh, inspired by Mother of Pearl Lake Ware. The exhibit that I saw from the uh, museum, and now it's the collection of that museum. So it's very meaningful work. And I keep um, developing. And as you can see, it's a little different than a traditional Bujagi style. But I really enjoy creating something, and that fulfills my curiosity. And indigo dyeing and natural dyeing is another interest that I love to learn. So over time, I took some classes and made some bojagi using indigo dyed fabrics. And recently, this one is not um, dyed by myself. I made a trip to Japan and visit the indigo studio, and they were selling remnants. They call it hagire. So I bought um, wonderful fabrics, um, remnants of fabrics from them, and then make it into my bojagi. So I call, I named this bojagi jaturi. Jaturi means remnants in Korean, and hagire is um, remnants in Japanese, I think. And natural dye, I am not an expert, but I love to um, experiment. So sometimes I use um, very simple materials like onion skins, avocado pits, and metal roots. And try to make bojaki out of fabrics that I made. Died. So last um, two months ago, in July, I went to Seattle and to Kakishibu uh, workshop at uh, Botanical Colors, um, wonderful teachers um, 
Ishii family, I think, husband and wife, Taka and Tomo. So uh, after I took um, a workshop, I came back home and I turned my white jacket vest, white vest linen, linen vest um, dyed with kakishibu and then I treated with um, iron mordant. So last week when I went to the workshop, I was able to wear my vest. So it was fun project. And I sometimes dye a lot of plain bojagi with the natural dyes and use as gift wrap. So these are my holiday gift wraps. And sexual nubi is another technique that I love to uh, share with people. This is Korean quilting using hanji mulberry paper cords. So instead of cotton or wool or silk bedding, silk bedding, I use paper and um, stitch with um, hagumjil back stitch by hand. And this is another um, great project that I want to share with people. And since my background is fashion, I always want to wear something that I made. So these are some examples of wearable pojagi. And I sometimes print out my own fabric and make into a garment. And these are um, collaboration with a pattern maker, Megan Nielsen. And Bujagi made me exhibit my work and made me trip, travel. So in 2018, I was able to go to Turkey to participate. The, the quilt show over there and England Festival of Quilts and down bottom corner, you can see uh, the author of um, Bojagi book, Sarah Cook, she's my dear friend. And during the pandemic, I was a part of um, the Young Open and Fiber Art um, exhibit in Sebastopol. So the center work is my remnant of memory that you saw the image from the newsletter. And um, in 2021, uh, my friend in Korea, uh, she does a pattern design and she sent us um, remnants of her fabric. And as you can see, nine artists from all over the world participated and we were able to show this in Korea. And during the pandemic, I made a lot of face masks and I got a lot of um, leftover muslin bits. So starting from that idea, I made the two big hope uh, bujagi that we really need back then. And this went to um, Paris last year to exhibit in um, at the gallery in Paris. And this year I was really busy teaching, traveling and sharing and writing all sorts of things and little time to make my own work. But um, I was able to do a two-person exhibit with my apprentice in San Francisco as a result of our um, apprenticeship. And right now, I'm participating in another uh, Bujagi Journey exhibit in La Conner. And I am going to deliver this work to the Young Open uh, next two week to participate. So this piece, I used a um, traditional technique called Yeojumun Bo, uh, cathedral window pattern. And I used my father's calligraphy um, practice sheet so I can collaborate as a family. So this is my father's strokes and my stitches. And I am leading another community bujagi right now with um, St. Louis Art Museum. So this is growing every day like this. And at the end of this month, I will go back and um, present the finished um, community bujagi. And 
these are a couple of things that I participated this year. So if you are familiar with Quilt Folk magazine, I was featured um, and Thread magazine, I um, wrote an article about Pojagi and some techniques. And my book is coming in 2024. So I'm very excited to share um, my journey with more people. So over time, I met a lot of people with interest in um, not only in textiles or Pujagi, but also culture and history and traditions. So I formed the Korea Textile Tour so I can travel with people and take workshops and meet artists and visit museums and learn a lot of new things and eat a lot of good foods. So I've been doing it before the pandemic and I had a break. And this October, I'm happy to go back and travel with people. And this year I will go to Naju and we will take workshop with um, national treasure of Indigo Dying tradition. So I'm quite excited to take um, my people and learn Korean indigo dyeing um, tradition for myself too. So this is my um, short presentation about my journey to find happiness. The so first I picked up needle and thread and fabric and made the bojagi and tried to put good wishes into bojagi, but actually bojagi gave me back all the happiness that I put. So these are um, the words that I can think of um, while I was making Bojagi and uh, it just comes back to me and made me happy. So I'd love to talk about Bojagi and other things for um, hours and hours, but um, this is about um, 30 minutes um, sharing of my Bojagi and my story and I hope you found this something interesting from my talk and hope to meet you again with um, more subjects and more things to talk about. Thank you so much um, for letting me share my passion with you. Youngman, thank you so, so much. This was really uh, just such exquisite thought put into each piece. Like, I just love the idea that the whole year imbuing a textile with all of this um, just positive thinking, you know, good thoughts, wishes, building community, and you, all of your practices is aligned around that. It's really really a lovely, lovely way to move with your practice in the world. Thank you for uh, sharing that. I'm going to let Amy go ahead and uh, I know there's a fair number of questions in the chat and uh, Amy, go right ahead and get started with those. Sure. And thank you so much. That was, I, I feel so peaceful too from, from your talk and just learning, learning everything. I know, um, Young man, you wanted to show some of the your stitch book, and I, there's a couple people who are asking questions about the stitch sample book. Is it a mm -hmm. workshop? Um, are they available to purchase? So did did you want to do your um that other yeah. to show it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you can uh, spotlight my close up. Yeah, let's see. Where did it go? Kathy's gonna beat me to it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. To get it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, over time, I made many books and um, my first two books are um, in this um, Asian Art Museum in San Francisco and I need to have my own book. So I made more and I taught some workshops of um, teaching how to do all the stitch samplers and make it into a book. So I have several books that I want to share with you and a couple more in here too. So 
So my original book was made out of um, Raimi. So I used uh, maybe 10 yards of Raimi, fold into pages like this, and then bind into a book. Uh, but I think this one is easier to share, show, so I will use this one. So this is my hot copy of my uh, stitch sampler. And you can see three decorative stitches, chassis, pine nuts, decorative mot motifs, and 10 basic stitches, running stitch, back stitch, whip stitch, basting stitch, and um, blind stitch, herringbone, and pakji, as I mentioned, is a symbol of happiness and three decorative stitches, tatugi, uh, elongated cross stitch to connect edges together, and how to disperse your seam. Sometimes I use um, sewing machine to make very fine stitch line too. And this is samsol. One of my favorite um, seam technique to make single layered bojagi chogakko and some variations of samsol. And kojipki. Kojipki is very effective um, decorative and stitching technique to show raised um, lines with very uh, natural looking curves. So this is my uh, each sampler. And another book is um, Samsol book. You can see my Samsol Bojagi as a background. And this is Samsol. This is a technique to make single layer Jogakbo. So I start with two different seam allowances and stitch first line using Kamchimjil whip stitch and then fold over using the bigger seam and then finish by another set of a row of whip stitches, kamchimjil. Then you can see the front and the back are exactly the same. And there are some variations of using different stitches. Instead of two rows of whip stitches, you can do whip stitch and running stitch. Running stitch and whip stitch. And running stitch and running stitch. And you will get this finished stitch lines. So this is my Samsol book. And another book is here. And this is my Yoiju Moon book. book. And Yoiju is a wish fulfilling jewel in Buddhism and Korean culture. So each unit resembles um, make a wish jewel. And sometimes people call it um, old coin pattern because the circle resem resembles um, old coin that P Korean people were used. So start with the square fabric with the seam allowance and then fold and fold one, two, three, four corners into the middle center to make like a fortune teller and then flip it over and do the same steps. So after fold eight times, you finish one unit. You need to have two or four units to make the pattern. So here are my one, two, three, four units. And then I decorated with a small tiny square fabric to finish like this. So, um, yeah, last couple of years, I've been teaching how to do um, these books and I have planned to teach more. And now I have a plan to make limited editions of books that I made. So I'd love to introduce sometime when I have time. This year has been so uh, busy with um, teaching trips and traveling 
and writing a book and article and other things. So I didn't have much time, but finishing those two bojagi on my backside. And next year, I hope I can have more time to sit down and make more. Young men, so this is, uh, yes. Oh, sorry, were you going to show something else? I was just going to ask you a question about, uh, somebody was asking about the uh, stitch, the sample book, because the video or the DVD that you have, is that for sale on your site? Um, stitch sample book. Um, oh, the, the, you had some kind of a DVD that you were talking about. Oh, yeah. The DVD is, um, yeah, DVD is here. DVD is the one that I made um, long several years ago and this teaches um I talk about um histories and cultures and I teach one two three project so by watching it you can learn basic stitches and make your own project but not the uh, stitch book stitch book is the one that I developed in 2020 I think okay. and I think have uh, a lot of people yeah. that would that would purchase your a stitch book from you on this I uh, see. Friday. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So I, I'd love to make more and it just makes me feel good. And stitching act of stitching is um, finding happiness for me. So I'd love to do more. And okay. I have one more Pujaki that I showed you on the um, presentation. So so this is my luminous bujagi that I did with um several layers so you can see through. Oh, is your, I'm sorry. Through. Let me get you back to oh, the... Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. Oh, give me a sec. Uh, there it is. Okay. Thank you. So as you can see, this is two layers, but each layer has its own construction. So you can see through all the uh, stitches and effects. So that was one um, thing for me to do. And here's another one. It looks um, plain from the top, but underneath I constructed some jogakbo actually two more layers on the back so you can see through and feel the depth so that's another bujagi and i think i have one more here i think this one we can go back to um spotlight my face so okay. i can bring it up and you can everybody can see so it this is very um Oh, wow. Traditional, typical um, chugakbo construction that I used the Raimi Moshi fabric. And the fun thing is I took picture of this work and then make it into a jacket that I'm wearing. I love that. Oh, that yeah. I don't know how you're, I'm sure, well, I'm sure there's 40 questions down that I'm mm -hmm. seeing right now that there's a question about how you make fabric out of your hijagi. I see. So I just took advantage of um, technology nowadays. So I took picture of my own uh, work image and I used the spoon flower and they make wonderful fabric. So I could uh, play with it. Yeah. Yeah. Spoon yeah. flower is interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump into some questions. We're definitely not mm -hmm. going to get I, I was telling you there's gonna be so many questions yes many questions for you um somebody's asking if there's a resource available that details the list of stitches included in your sample book or if that's something maybe that will be in that 2024 book right yeah so in my book i put all the information about stitches and um fabric samples and um that book will um includes 17 very simple projects so you can start uh, with very simple projects and gradually you can learn about pujagi making techniques okay i'm yeah, sure already marked that down to order we will get that 
And of course, mm -hmm. people are asking about teaching and stuff too. I, Kathy, we're crazy if we we don't have a class or a few classes here with young men. Okay. Um, young so men's coming to Seattle next week. We're definitely yeah, going to have a few discussions. Yeah, have a few yes. discussions. I mean, I, I want to come take some classes. Let's see. Um, I'd there, love to. <laughs> yeah. Are the stitches are the stitches always by hand or can a sewing machine be okay? You can use sewing machine, but um, hand stitching is my style. I find peace while I stitch. So that's why I love to um, make things with hand stitching. But yes, you can use sewing machine. And I think it's early 20th century in Korea. Bujagi made out of sewing machine was kind of status symbol because you can afford the sewing machine, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you are comfortable using sewing machine, there are lots, lots of possibilities to play with. So yes, you can do it. Let's see, somebody says, we often see Bojagi hung as window coverings to show the beautiful seeming and transparency. Is Bojagi used in windows in Korea traditionally? I think so. Not um, exactly the same style um, that we hang on the window, but um, some Bojagi were seen as um, used as window covering. And um, it's like, um, there's no um, glass window in all the days in Korea. So they used um, door or window with um, wooden panel and decorated with paper hanji. And then when they open that, sometimes they need to do coverings. So you can see um, Bujagi was used uh, for that purpose too. So I only scratched a little bit about Bojagi. There are so many uses, so many constructions, so many different styles and so many um, materials. So I'd love to spend three days, five days with you and talk about it. I would also like that. Yeah. Um, somebody is also asking what type of needles that you use. I use very sharp needle and um, Sometimes I use short needles, but I usually uh, use kind of long, sharp, very tiny eyed um, Japanese needle because that feels um, comfortable to me, but you can use any kind of um, needle. That's fine. That you can throw your um, thread, your um, thread. And talking about the thread, I use a uh, cotton thread for um, natural fi um, cellulose fibers, and I use silk thread for silk fabrics. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was a question, I passed it, but somebody was asking about how you get such straight lines. Oh, mm -hmm. straight lines. Mm -hmm. um, my secret is tell your material, especially fabric, you have to behave. <laughs> And then oh, oh. give a little, yeah, give a little bit of um, ironing. And I showed you a Hera marker. The bone folder is um, another friend of mine, so I use it. But mostly um, it looks very straight, but um, it's because of the fiber. And uh, I don't think I can make perfect, perfect straight line. Just try to do as much as I can and um, yeah, let, let fabric behave and let needle and thread go, mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you will get some good lines. Um, Kathy, somebody's asking about the book that you were holding up that had um, Young Men's, or maybe you have it right there, Young Men, but Kathy has. Oh. It, yes. It's Sarah's book that she spoke about her friend right yeah yeah oh, Sarah so, Sarah, Cook. Mm -hmm. so that's Sarah like Cook's Bojagi book and she and I met in Korea and um, she came to California and took some um, class with me 
Mm-hmm. Actually, she stayed at my house for um, a week and yeah, we did intensive class and um, her book is well um, written and you can find good information about Bojagi and because she's my good friend, I, she asked, when she asked me, I was happy to share my own work images over there. So you will see not only my work, but other um, wonderful mm-hmm. artists work too. I think we're at the top of the hour. I want to respect everyone's time. Um, Lots of beautiful comments about your work and the presentation. Everybody loved it and they're so inspired. Some people are going to be seeing you in that class. Um, Hopefully we'll see people up in uh, La Conner on the 14th of September. Yeah. So if you're around, please come and meet me. I'd love to. Yeah. And also seeing down below, sorry to all that I realized by kind of the last slide that if I just took off one of the spotlights, you could have seen the stitches closer. But that just means you're going to have to come take a class with young men um, either <clears throat> in California or come when we talk her into having classes with us or wait for that book that comes out for next year. So apologies for that, but at least I got one. <laughs> You know, not a Zoom pro here, you guys, but but thank you so much. Yes, thank you, young men. It's You're welcome. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really nice to meet you all. And yeah, so now I'm spreading my happiness to all of you. So you have a little bit of my happiness. So thank please, you so much. Yeah, we really needed it. Yes. Right. Yep. Thank well, you. If you want to all right. uh, yeah, unmute, unmute calls and say thank you and hello and goodbye. Go for it. Thank you. Oh, it was yeah. wonderful. Bye, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Great. Thank you. 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 Thank you for your happiness. Uh, My pleasure. Uh, well, that was one of your best presentations ever. Ever. Ah, yeah, ever. And I've had yeah. several yeah. classes. I've had several classes with young men. And it always, always a pleasure. Always yeah. learning, filled. Oh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh. Or online okay. classes, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hey. I love your feeling about joy. Is to how uh, how happy you are. That is the most inspiring. I mean, the work is wonderful, but joy is just how happy everything is for you. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Kathy, please have workshops with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Kathy, did you want to stop the recording on that nice I note? I will do that. One moment.